Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is algebra. Today I would like to tell you something about a very, very nice and cute way how to illustrate groups, so-called KD graphs. Uh, so graphs and groups, that's maybe the topic for today. And yeah, Cayley graphs actually do go back to Cayley. So this was 19th century, something like roughly like 100 years before graph theory was invented or studied. Graphs were more studied in uh, a more systematical way, which was then collected into what is nowadays called graph theory. And basically the main point is that you um, associate a graph to a group and then you can use methods from graph theory or linear algebra to study groups, which is a pretty nice idea. And well, also very, very nice for someone like me who likes diagrams uh, or diagrammatics, um, you, can, you can make a group visual, visually appealing. So uh, you can see properties of the group in the graph, which is, which is really good. So let's just jump right into it. And I start with a really, really, really easy group, Z mod 4Z. Um, and the only confusing thing here on the slide is probably that I have written it additively. So, and here I've written it multiplicatively. So don't get confused. So groups are usually written multiplicatively because it's just easier. Instead of writing A plus B, you just write A, a B for a, a times B. But anyway, Z mod 4 is easier to think about additively because Z mod 4 is, is a group uh, using addition, right? It's just addition modulo 4. And I've written down for you here the uh, multiplication table, which is <laughs> because it's additively written, actually the addition table, whatever, <laughs> the multiplication table of the group. And it is, it's really simple, like one plus zero is one, one plus one is two, one plus two is three, one plus three is zero, right? So I go back to where I started with C mod four. But there's a lot of information in this table and maybe it's a, a group of order four. So the table has 16 elements, right? If you have a group, group of order n, then the table has n squared elements. If you have an infinite group, then you have even an infinite table. So um, the abstract group is kind of equivalent to its multiplication table. But maybe there's a more efficient way to encode the information. You will lose a little bit, of course, because you, well, but uh, you will lose a little bit, of course, because you want to make it more efficient. But uh, you want to do that in a, in a way that you can still recover everything with some minor extra work. And the idea is the following. So first observe that one is a generator, which <laughs> it just means that if you add one often enough, you get everything else. Or multiplicatively written, you can you you uh, so this is you, you can um, obtain every element by writing a a word in the generator. So what would be a word? Well, if you would have a generator a, then a word would be the empty word. It would be a. It would be a times a. It would be a times a times a, and so on, and so on. So in this case, empty one, one times one, one times one times one. And remember, everything is written additively. So one times one times one is actually secretly one plus one plus one. So it's three. So generator just really means if you write um, just just re re write words in your corresponding set of symbols. In this case, just a symbol one, and then you can recover uh, all group elements in this way. Uh, if I would have two, let's say A and B then everything I could write in this in these things would be uh, something like this, would be a word in those generators. And just a slight catch, right? So um, just let me mention this, because you're, you're having a group, actually secretly every symbol has an inverse, which, which doesn't matter here. And yeah, well, whatever. You, you can also call those things words if you want. Uh, I won't do that today. So forget it. So a word is just a concatenation of symbols. And uh, a, a set of symbols is called generating if every element of your group appears as some word, as some finite word. And if you have that, and you can do the following trick, 
Uh, it's very nice. In this case, here's Zmod4. Here's my Zmod4. And this already looks like Zmod4. It looks very cyclic, right? And the, the, the way to do it is um, you make a graph. And each vertex of the graph is actually secretly a group element. So let's say this is group element 0, this is group element 1, this is group element 2, this is group element 3. And each edge in this graph is a directed edge, right? And I illustrate those directed edges by those uh, slightly cone-like things, because it just looks a little bit nicer. But secretly, this is a directed edge from this vertex to this vertex. And each edge encodes, um, in this case, addition by one. So putting one, one more generator to your existing word. So if this would be, um, let's say this would be G. Oh, some element G. And then this would be G times S where S is um, my, my generator. Okay, so you have a graph, and you have a group, you have a set of generators, and you make a graph out of it, which kind of in visually encodes the group as follows. You uh, make all the vertices, uh, make all the group elements vertices, and you add an edge between them, if you can go from one to the other by applying one of your generators. So let's have a look at another example, maybe that's more illustrating. So here we have all possible groups up to isomorphism of order six. So how do I see the order? Well, I have six vertices. Here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Here's one. Uh, same here, of course, here are six vertices. Um, okay. And I have two generators and I distinguish the generators by coloring, um, the, the edges actually. So I have two generators, one of them is a blue generator and one of them is a greenish generator. Okay. And this is just saying if I'm standing at this vertex and I apply the blue generator, then I'm hopping to this vertex. Right? If I apply the green generator, then I'm hopping to this vertex. Okay. Uh, let's do another one. If I'm standing here, and I'm applying the blue generator, then I'm hopping to this vertex. If I'm applying the green generator, then I'm hopping to this vertex. And the only thing you, well, that was not visible in this graph is now, because I have generators of order two, I secretly have something like this, an arrow back and forth, right? Why is that? Well, let's have a look. So if this is G and this is G times S, and then this is also secretly, because I have an order two generator, G times S times S. So um, for order two generators, so something which is its own inverse, order two, I always have double edges and I illustrate them by those double symbols. As you can see, this is secretly an, a symbol like this merged with a symbol like this. Okay. So up here, so here in between, I have an, uh, this green one here is of order two. And as you can see, and that's a nice thing about those graphs, you can see it, uh, the blue one is of order three. And if we look carefully enough, then you would identify this as actually Zmod three cross Zmod two. Can we see this? Well, here's Zmod three. You have two copies of it, and that's a Zmod two, and they're connected by, uh, by the Zmod two action here, right? So this is just Zmod two cross Zmod. Um, uh, Zmod 3 cross Zmod 2. The other one is S3. That's a bit harder to see, but basically those two generators here. So this one is the transposition 1, 2, and the blue one is the transposition 2, 3, which is a symmetric group in three letters. Given um, in my in my other diagrammatics, so this one here is in, in, in diagrammatic terms, this one is this crossing, or this, and this one is this one. And yeah, of course, this generates a symmetric group. And this is how the Cayley graph then looks like. And you can see that they're different. Um, uh, note the following. So there's something funny. So you can actually also see that the top one is commutative and the bottom one isn't commutative. Because commutativity would mean that AB, the two generators, equals BA, right? And this would mean 
if I start somewhere and I go A and then I go B, then I should end at the same point as whether I go B and then I go A. And yes, I do. So in this graph, you can check that all possible uh, two-step paths that you can, you can make like A, B, B, C, two-step walks, they commute. So let's have a look here. If I start here and I go first blue and then green, that's certainly not the same as going first green and then blue. So this is not commutative. This is commutative. First blue, then green is the same as first green, then blue. First blue, then green is not the same as first, first green, then blue. So it's not commutative. And again, it's a property of the group that you can see, literally see in the graph by just looking at it walks in the graph. I think that's pretty nice. So let's have a look at another example. Um, because it has a slight catch, the graph itself depends on your chosen generators. So I already showed you this one, but of course you can also illustrate the group F3 by choosing two different generators. So here I've chosen this one. And um, the one three, uh, one goes to three and this one, one goes to three. Oh, sorry, not this one, this was wrong. Uh, one goes to three, uh, three goes to two, and two goes to one, so this one. And the graph looks differently. For example, this one is not of order. Uh, this is the green generator, so this is not of order uh, two, but it's of order three, as you can see. And this generator is, of course, still the blue generator, and it's of order two, this edge here. And uh, now you might wonder, hey, wait, this looks, this looks very similar to this graph here, right? So this is these, uh, you just told us that this is Z mod three cross Z mod two. This looks very similar, almost. There's a slight catch. And it, it's, it, it's, it's obvious if I point it out. So if I start here and I go green and I go blue, so okay, the colors are swapped. Uh, I go blue, I go green. I end up here. And it was commutative, so if I did it the other way around, I ended up here as well. Okay, so let's do it. I go green, I blue. Oh, the edge is pointing in the opposite direction. I go green. So this is not commutative. This is not, not AB equals BA. It's, it's just a different uh, graph associated to the same, to the same group. So both of them are, um, are the symmetric group. And I will come back to this one later. So this may be more the classical picture, the top one, how to illustrate the symmetric group. And the bottom one is the dihedral group, actually. I will, I will come back to this. Well, in this case, the dihedral group and the symmetric group are the same. In general, they are not. But I will come back to the uh, third graph in a second. But anyway, I, I think this is still, well, there's a slight catch that it depends on the choice of generator. But it's still cool, because you can see properties of the group in the graph. For example, you can see um, uh, whether it's commutative or not. Let me show you something else, what you can see. You can say something like, um, well, going here and here, which would be green squared. Let me just write D squared. Uh, is the same as going something like this. You can go blue, green, blue. So this would be blue, green, blue. So you can see relations in the group by just uh, looking at walks in the graph, which is also pretty cool. And um, yeah, so the formal definition is then exactly what, what I just explained. So you associate a graph by the vertices of the graph are the group elements. Uh, you need to color edges. We already have seen that, right? You need to, if you have more than one generator, you need colors, uh, not, not very surprising. And you draw an edge exactly between G and GS uh, and the edges of color S, right? So that's exactly the Cayley graph. And I listed some properties of those Cayley graphs. So for example, this, uh, if, if you're invertible, then that's a, this is kind of this double edge. If you're self-inverse, then, then you have those, those double edges here. Um, Cayley graphs are always connected. So strongly connected is just connected in the uh, oriented sense. They're always connected. Um, I already talked about this commutativity. Is all, if all two-step paths commute, so those two are not commutative, here's a two-step path, 
uh, two step pass in this AB sense, and it's different from, from this one, so it's not commutative. And here it was commutative. Um, I already ex also explained this one. So closed walks correspond to relations. So here you see a nice relation. So going from here to here is the same as going from here to here, which is the same as saying blue, green, blue equals green, blue, green. Which is a very classical relation that you see in the in the, in the symmetric group. So this is also pretty cool, and which I'm I'm not going to touch the last one. I I have a link in the description to something nice. But basically, um, a graph is an object of linear algebra by using its adjacency matrix. So the matrix that that um, that basically looks how the vertices are connected. So you have an entry in the matrix for each edge. And whenever you have a matrix, you can apply methods from linear algebra to study a certain nonlinear object like a group, which is pretty cool. Um, so the link in the description, for example, expresses eigenvalues of, of those graphs uh, in terms of character. So this would be just one, one nice application. Uh, anyway, so I, I think this is pretty cool. So it's a pretty nice way to uh, think about groups like as graphs. Um, and you can see properties of the groups in the graphs, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, so let me finish by a nice example. So I, the dihedral group is the symmetry group. So D, uh, this is D10, dihedral group of order 10. It's a symmetry group of a 10 gun. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it has two generators, uh, pretty much obviously two generators. One of them is a rotation here, so it's just rotating. And the other one is a reflection. So it's 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 a reflection along this axis. Okay, these are the two generators. And in this, well, well this is certainly self dual. So this is this in this graph here is a blue generator, certainly self dual, and this is a green one and of course it's of order 10 right it's a rotation by a tenth of a uh, by, by a 36 degrees so this is, which is which is a tenth of 100 uh, of 360 so it's certainly of order 10 so this is a green generator going around all the way here and now the Cayley graph is very nice because it is again actually a, relic, a regular polygon with an inside circle and an outside circle running in the opposite direction and they are connected, so 10 edges, and they are connected by, by the reflection action. So you have a, a, a regular tangon in a regular tangon connected by uh, the reflection. And of course, there's nothing special about 10, so this holds for a D155. Um, anyway, I hope you liked this video. Um, and well, more importantly, I hope you like Cayley graphs because I do like Cayley graphs. Well, then no, that's not a good reason to like Cayley graphs. I hope you like Cayley graphs. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to see you next time.